I do a fist bump this morning. It gets people in trouble, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> wink, wink. All right, let's start with what happened this week. The news, we did not get Project Ocean, which is Panasonic. What's the story behind the story? Yeah, so uh, Project Ocean was a big uh, project. It was multi-billion dollar, 4,000 jobs promised uh, for a new EV battery company that would have been up in Prior, Oklahoma. Let's remind the viewers here that even the representative from Prior, Oklahoma didn't think this was a good idea. Um, I'm not sure that us missing out on this has anything to do other than the fact that Kansas offered about double of the incentives that we offered. And I think that viewers at home need to ask yourself the question, how much do we need to give away in order to get something back? And Kansas gave away the farm on this in order to get something there. It needs to make financial sense for us. I, I think having 4,000 new jobs, um, especially in more of a rural area of Oklahoma and something like EV technology would have been a good thing, but at what cost? Yeah, and they're gonna put it on a super fun side. Holy moly, okay. So we're gonna get to this. There's some finger pointing going on, but the story behind the story. Yeah, so what's going on is Oklahoma offered around $750 million in order to move this 4,000 job Panasonic plant. Kansas offered about $1.5 billion, almost double what we offered. The other truth is there's still a shot at having a second plant. If you look at Panasonic's filings, they're talking about the possibility of having a second plant coming in. Uh, that's the reality. We've got, we have a jewel up in prior and we don't need to pay that much money. We got to get an ROI on that return. And I'm, I'm not sad we didn't get it if the cost was 1.5 billion. I still think though, there's a chance we're gonna get the second round. And if it's not, somebody else is gonna move into that area by, by the Grand River Lake, uh, Grand River Dam Lake Authority. It's a good area up there. So lots of questions about, our, people are trying to use this for political reasons. People are asking where the money's going to go that was set aside, help us out on all that. Yeah, so no money was spent. That's what's so important. It's amazing how many people don't seem to be getting that. Some they're even trying to report on it. No money was spent on canoe, no money was spent on Panasonic. We've learned from past mistakes that past legislators made, for example, the wind incentive, which just got absolutely out of control. Grain incentive at the time just grew to ridiculous proportions. Canoe and Panasonic will only get any incentives if they have the ability to get those. And by the way, because that money is still there, what we need to do is do what the governor calls us in and go in and cut taxes. We need to cut the, cut the tax on groceries and we need to cut the income taxes. If we have $750 million to give a company, we need to give it to our citizens. Okay, so he's put a market down there. Your thoughts about all of the, the, the blowback from this? Yeah, so there is still 700-ish uh, million dollars that the legislator set aside. So what they did was put that aside basically in a, a separate fund that they, are, uh, they have the ability to take back. None of it was spent on this company uh, yet. Um, I do want to say that I think it's important that we continue to look at bringing manufacturing to the state of Oklahoma. This was going to be a manufacturing uh, plant for EV batteries. Manufacturing going forward is going to be a good thing for jobs in the economy in Oklahoma. Back to that 700 million, I'm not sure that we should just willy-nilly go give it as a tax cut. I think that the legislature should bring that back. Look, if we continue to invest in education and infrastructure in Oklahoma, we're gonna have a better opportunity to get these kind of manufacturing jobs in our state. Okay, coming up, we're gonna talk about a business report this week. We're the third worst in the nation in terms of health issues and still beat Texas. We'll take it apart when we come back. Well, you know, we talked about a big respected television network, business network this week, did a poll saying, or did a list. They said, we're the third worst place to live in the United States, still ahead of Texas. Your thoughts about these lists of worst and best? You know, I, I do a lot to try to defend the media. I try to do as much as I can to be open and honest and transparent with my constituents. But lists like these drive me crazy. You're going to call Arizona and Texas two of the worst places to live in America when they're top 10 in net incoming. They took into account things like voter security. Um, they took into things like inclusion. Oklahoma was number three. You know, these things are clickbait. And they, it gets frustrating to me because there's real legitimate news out there. So here's what I will say. We are, we're net income positive migration and anyone that comes here at Oklahoma knows because of strong conservative policies low unemployment it's a great place to be here and I just get so tired of these ridiculous clickbait polls that means he doesn't agree with that particular <laughs> network your thoughts about these polls he calls clickbait 
Well, with temperatures over 110 degrees all week this week, it might be, you know, the worst place to live for the next week. But I wouldn't say the third worst place to live in the country by any stretch. I will say that while I do uh, agree with my colleague that stories like this are clickbait, I do think if you read into the lines on this, there are areas for us to improve. This story talked about us having some of the worst health outcomes in the nation, and I think that that's probably true. We do have bad health outcomes. So let's look at policies in order to improve those things. If we want to continue to grow as a state, if we want to continue to ensure that our children stay here and invest in this great place that we've grown up, then we're going to have to do things like invest in health care, invest in education, invest in infrastructure. That's right. Okay. Now we've got, we've been doing this, we did it last week, we'll do it right up to the primary, taking apart some of these runoffs that people may not know about. This week's uh, runoff of the week. Yeah, there was a big endorsement this week in the runoff, and um, I'll pardon you all that know that I'm the Democrat on the show, that we don't have any runoffs for Democrats, so we are talking about Republican runoffs. Uh, but this one was in the U.S. Senate race. There was a big endorsement. Former President Trump endorsed uh, Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen this week in that runoff. That should be a big boost. Um, the former president is still very popular with Republicans in the state. Uh, I think that that probably gets the Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen across the line. Although I do feel a little bit bad uh, for my Rodell colleague, uh, T.W. Shannon, who put in a lot of work for the Trump campaign, and that's got to feel kind of like a slap in the face. It, it is an important point. It does seem the former president does look at polls before he does these endorsements. Well, the, the runoff we're talking about is the United States Senate race between T Speaker T.W. Shannon, former Speaker, Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen. We've been saying on this show since the very beginning, those are the two, it was a two-person race, and it still is a two-person race. It just goes to show how deep the Republican bench is. When you have a guy like Speaker T.W. Shannon, who is just a national rock star, has the ability to be on a vice presidential candidate ticket someday, to know that he's running second in the polls to Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen, uh, it's a great time to be a Republican. Republican in the state of Oklahoma, which means it's a great time for the state of Oklahoma. Uh, we did get a Trump endorsement in this race, but this is still going to come out, like I said to the last one, who gets their voters out, and it shows how deep the bench is right now in the Republican Party. We did not hear the I word this week, <laughs> and it's, it's really a big story, but we can't get to all of them, but we will next week. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts, and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks. <laughs>